So I'm making a bait for a dude. I'm pretty sure I've never made a bait for a dude in a video on this channel. This is a first, fellas. <laughs> I've already started, as you can see. I've even cut the joints all perfectly. No camera rolling. I didn't think I was gonna make a video for this, but I hope the dude that I'm making this bait for has seen The Lord of the Rings. Because either way, my intention is to make an Eye of Sauron bait. Trout. Eye of Sauron big trout swim bait. He wants a big trout swim bait. I don't feel like painting a normal rainbow trout. What's the next best thing? An Eye of Sauron trout big swim bait. The real story is I just want a reason to use these dead meat custom beautiful Eye of Sauron eyes that I've had for a long time and I need to just use them on this. I have some fantastical ideas though for the paint scheme on this. So starting now, enjoy the rest of this build. For extra gill protrusion or gill trusion, I've been putting the shape of the gills on the bait before you even start shaping out the body. And when carving, not going past that line. That way it leaves all the material there. So you can shape the gills however you want after the body's done. And you can have them sticking out really far. A little specific gill plate sticking out even further, you know. Line to line, right there to right there. Straight line. We're gonna slim this down. We're gonna make it very fishable by removing a bunch of material. Ow. Funny bone. I need a second, fellas. Holy moly. Okay. Line to line. So I just drew that line. But when I'm carving, it's gonna go from that line all the way down to here. All that material's gone. When you really take everything into account, it's like you removed 30, 40% of the massive wood right here. Probably closer to 30. 40 is probably too much. You can make these baits so much more pleasant to fish with. Just casting it alone is much easier. That'll look really nice rounded off and thin all the way along the top too. I'm excited. I'm just not even caring anymore. My hand's just in the shot, adjusting the zoom. Just... I like your snowman, Finn. Good job. Oh. Do you pipe? Yes. Big yellow pipe. You got a snow? You got a snow? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> that is an abomination right there. <laughs> No lead yet though. We must finish cutting this joint and seal the wood. Nice precise joint. Let's do 0.35 inches away from the top and bottom. 
that's where the joint hardware will go. You're gonna wanna mark this stuff in the right spot. Pretty important. More room for wiggle, always important. You see how this bait, the head's the fattest thing. Lots of wood up here and it all just narrows down to little wood. And then I have the most lead up in the head too. Kind of offering the appropriate amount of lead to counteract the appropriate amount of wood, but technically more mass up in the head. The head's bigger, it's just a tapering body and it has the most mass, but it'll still sit flat. You know what I mean? Is that gonna make it glide farther? Because there, there's more mass in the front and it, everything tapers away. Is that gonna mean that? I know water drag on the face of a lure. To overcome that, you get a further glide and maybe having more mass in the face of the bait. I don't know. However undeveloped they might be, those were my thoughts. There you go. giving each of these holes something for the lead to grab onto. To find out if that helps when it comes to the lead wanting to come out of these baits. This is a big swim bait. I'm familiar with how badly lead wants to come out of them. <laughs> that should get pretty close to doing something about it though. We'll see. Let's get that lead pot hot. This bait's gonna use good old traditional twist wire hardware. It's a tradition now, I guess. Good old twist wire hardware. And I'm not going to weigh it with the tail. It is just a tiny bit heavier and you can compensate a bit. So I need to get something to weigh this in. Biggest bull from inside the house. I think the lead's hot. Hot, Woo. <laughs> The water around the lead gets really hot too. If that gets to your finger, it's no fun. We're sinking. We're sinking hard and very, very nose first. I have a feeling I'm gonna need to drill another hole in this back piece and add lead. Let's satisfy that feeling immediately. I'll show you my hole when I'm done. Okay, I drilled another hole and I already added lead and I found out that it sinks too much now and I gotta drill it out. Then I'm gonna cut some off and put it back in. Isn't lead fun? A little better, still need more, dang it. Also, there's a bunch of lead that needs drilled out of the front of the front piece too. Let me do all the drilling and stuff. It's a, it's a lot of back and forward from the drill press to the there to the lead pot. And whenever you go from water to the lead pot, you gotta dry your bait off or else it explodes. That is just absolutely stunningly perfect. Barely, barely, barely floats. Perfect. Let's get those gnarly lead holes covered and get to painting. No, fellas, I'm sorry. This is not super glue baking soda. It's five minute epoxy with glass microspheres. Before you unsubscribe, just know I couldn't have used super glue baking soda because there's just too much of it. It would have weighed the bait down. And I don't know why I didn't record it, but I had to use something that was about the same buoyancy as water. You understand, right? Please come back. That's all of the lead I drilled out of this bait, by the way. You wanna make sure you don't just have chips of this stuff flying everywhere in your shop. Lead management. I'm gonna sand this for a half an hour and see you then. This is probably a weird shot. Already laying this bait down and putting a stencil on it. We're gonna get some of the color that is in the eye on the bait. 
wicked yellow. Cover up the gills some. Don't want too much overspray. That'll do. This is detail that will be behind detail and probably behind detail. It's just getting some color on it. I'm really intending for this Eye of Sauron trout to maintain its natural look. Somehow I just want to apply it very detailed and I want little speckles to be everywhere and color changes everywhere. The ridiculous rotisserie is loud as ever, which means it's time for clear coat. And look at this. This has got to be one of the most ridiculous clear coats I've ever made. There's this in it, plus red flake and gold flake. That is an extremely clean first clear coat. Very few imperfections. That's hard to do for the first one. Still maintain all the gill detail too. It's going to do a lot for the rest of the paint job. Immediately with the masking fluid. I've decided that just getting the scales on this thing as soon as possible will set me on the right course. I haven't been really inspired by anything I've painted on this thing yet. I'm not, I'm not really digging it, but sometimes you don't dig it till later and then you really dig it. I'm going to come in aggressively with the pearl white and hit the belly and allow all sorts of overspray towards the top. Then it's gonna be silver, golds, maybe whites on the belly. I want a lot of variation from bottom to top when it comes to colors of the scales. I really don't know how this is going to look other than different. Okay, the colors are there. Gold, silver, pink lateral line. I didn't apply any pink scales. Pearl white, opaque white. That is a beautiful spectrum right there. That's got good color. I can see green from the umber way down there. Put a bunch of gold right at the surface towards the top. You see that? That is a good color transition right there with all that detail behind the scales. The yellow in the belly don't look too bad either. That pattern's covered up enough to not make sense. Plenty more detail to go. The next painting step is a bold one. Pearl yellow over a stencil. You see the yellow around the outside of that pupil? That's what I intend for this yellow to be matching. Not only in color, but in shape. And I'm gonna just bring some spray along the lateral line. It's gonna overspray up and down. But then, only on the inside of the yellow that I sprayed, and bars across the lateral line will I put black. And that might be in the form of dots or striping. Maybe dots in the shape of a stripe, eh, yeah. Plenty of not knowing if things will look good on this bait so far. I think that looks good. I can deal with that. So much color. I forgot how colorful that was. That's good though, because we'll be able to put a lot of detail in there because of that color.
I think this is a wonderful representation of what if the eye of Sauron had to be a trout would be. Right here. It's gonna have a bright red fin, so anyone disappointed there's not more red on it, there'll be a bright red fin back here. Most fish that have red eyes do not have red bodies. How nerve wracking. Is that an evil looking fin? I would say that's an evil looking fin for sure. Did I start like right there? See, that looks way different. <laughs> Fins can look different. Who would expect both fins on either side of a fish to be doing the exact same thing anyway, you know? A psycho, that's who. Don't believe it. I'm kind of liking the dark and evil theme to him. I might leave him just like that. Let's get the reason I built this bait on this bait. Beautiful dead meat custom eye of Sauron red eye. I'm gonna use epoxy. I think when I lay this flat, there's gonna be space behind it. So I need to bed it in epoxy. As for the tail, we're gonna use Flex 50. An entire unnecessary ounce of it. That's the only way to get the uh, translucency I'm looking for. Single drop of red, hopefully. Going for single drop. Oh, the work time's four minutes, okay. I should not have been whipping all those bubbles into it. Whoopsie dipsy. I was intending to vacuum this. Let's try to do it quick. I'm gonna try to vacuum this and then I'm gonna pour it. starting to set up already, but I have a really, really great technique here. You just pour a ton in there and you squish it closed. And you let some fall out the bottom and you squish it closed. And make sure you get all of this over your nice leather work surface. There. That'll be ready tomorrow. Dang bubble. So difficult to not have. I just accept it. That's how you know it wasn't injected at a million PSI. It was hand poured by a hairy dude in a shop. That's how you know it's good. I take the time to very intentionally coat the inside of the pilot holes. That way you're giving five minute epoxy time to seep into the wood grain inside of the pilot hole. It's very messy, so you don't just slam it all the way in there and get a bunch of epoxy inside of the eyelet. You do need to kind of remove the excess. You wanna look down it too. You wanna make sure these are coming out the same distance. You don't wanna bend in your bait when you didn't intend to have one. Glue has been applied to everything. Easy. Absolutely perfect. Don't touch it. Man, the river went up. I think I can test it in a little pool closer though. I'm gonna test it down there. Well, hopefully something ends up being visible on that camera. You know what? It's a cold water floater and a warm water sinker. I can get it to dive though. Dang, that is stability. That is gorgeous. Yeah, it's got the glide down. It definitely glides. Fall of 74, linked below. He is who I'm sending this bait to. In exchange for swim bait wraps. He's got really cool ones, like awesome leather and furs and stuff. For times just like right now, where I need my bait to be covered. Like this is a very, very nice, expensive, handmade, crazy swim bait that needs wrapped up and protected, you know? And I'm not sponsored, I just traded him that bait for wraps. I would prefer to give in return, like do a fair, 
a real trade, you know? If anybody wants to trade awesome stuff for baits, just message me on Instagram, let me know. I like trading awesome stuff for baits. Anyway, that's why I made this one. I think I need to go back to the shop because it's windy. Maybe not and I'm yelling for no reason, but I'm going back to the shop, one sec. That's fall of 74 on Instagram right there. Bait wraps, man. Awesome stuff, dude. Just seemed like something I needed. I'll show you those swim bait wraps when I get them. As for the bait, it is a fantastic specimen of a wooden swim bait. I really like how I did the brush striations to imitate that stuff in gills that exists in real, on real fish, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> this video's over. On to the next bait. Jep, what are you eating? Jep. Jep, you're not listening to me. Chippy, Jep. Chip, chip, come on. Get out of here. Come here. Come here. Come. 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 Oh my, Chippy. Oh. Oh, you are not listening to me. What do you think of the snowman, Chip?